Hello everyone out there, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. Hope you're doing fantastically well. Guys, Zilla Corrupt Day video here. I uh, won't go into gigantic detail, but I wanted to pick up a couple of top key points for Zilliqa. Um, big talk around recently, of course, the metaverse in general. However, in the last couple of days, uh, Sandra here from um, <clears throat> Zilliqa, sorry, head of metaverse and NFTs, uh, giving a nice little kind of introduction preview here uh, on a recent, I'm assuming, sort of development of a, a Zoom call or something with partners. Uh, look at this. This is crazy. I mean, this is just the beginning, guys. Uh, Zillica obviously doing a multitude of things, have a humongous ecosystem building. And one of their particular advantages, if you like, of their ecosystem in terms of transactional fees being so low and everything like this, they are building a future in gaming uh, and the metaverse in general. There are a number of other tokens that I'm quite interested in uh, through Zillica's DEX platform. Um, we will probably do a video on a few of those end of this week if anyone's interested in that. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, um, you know, this digital world is, is, is a really interesting topic actually. And, um, you know, <laughs> brilliant. So, you know, commercial aspect, uh, socially, I think it's interesting. I'm just going to Sandra's uh, Twitter page here, actually, because uh, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, recently, she's done a, a thread uh, on the points of, of Metaverse. And let us know in the comments below what you think about some of these. I mean, she's basically talking about uh, the advantages of Metaverse. Um, you know, we aren't going into too much detail. I want to go into the chart uh, as soon as possible, but very much around uh, the social aspects. So meeting new people, strengthen relationships, build communities, the creative aspect, of course, fantastic decentralization, absolutely brilliant compared to perhaps centralized uh, systems where maybe Facebook's meta will be doing so. Um, limitless in terms of number of users, experiences of the world. So I think that's the good thing, I guess, about the, the Zill ecosystem of the, the magnitude of it uh, in, this, in this space that can be created. Uh, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, owned and shaped by the people living, connecting, creating, and participating in it. Last but not least, the metaverse is our world, ours to build, ours to innovate, blah, blah, blah. Interesting to see if the GZIL, uh, the governance aspect of Zillica, is something that I've obtained through staking uh, over the last long period of time, if that will have any influence in the metaverse system of, you know, perhaps voting, um, having things done or not done in, in the system, uh, I have to see how that, that occurs, uh, as well as just Zillica's governance in general. Um, but I think um, there's obviously some really positive attributes here. I'm still on a bit of a, a fence, if you like, with Metaverse. I think it's an unreal concept. I absolutely loved it, uh, the concept of like Ready Player One, the gaming aspect. But I equally see the downside of Metaverse. Um, you know, I think we're going to get this matrix effect of, you know, which... Which life do you want to go down? Uh, which one are you going to get stuck in? And I think eventually as the mind goes, we see the pattern, how, how much our minds are influenced by distractions, technology, uh, entertainment, if you like. And then at what point do we cross over and be like, actually, I don't like the real world anymore. I want to go into this world because of X, Y, Z reasons. So it's going to be a really interesting space, in my opinion. It's, it's a really big topic. Uh, you can't stop it. It's going to happen no, no matter what. I just think everyone needs to maybe judge uh, <laughs> the emphasis of, of how far in they want to go uh, because I guess once you're in, you're on the path and it might be quite difficult to come out of it. Uh, you know, as depressing the world becomes or the real world becomes, uh, the richer get richer, the poorer get poorer. I can, I can understand the social aspect and encouragement of metaverse to a lot of people. And it's not my place to say because a lot of people might prefer that virtual world. Your life is your life. You decide what you want to do in it, not what others want you to do in it. Uh, obviously, as long as it's within regulation and law and everything like that, of course, um, you know, what's the problem? Um, you know, some people may just like that area of life. So Zillica has got loads of stuff going on all the time. Um, I just wanted to pick out a couple of things here as well. I mean, look at this. Uh, absolute phenomenal amount of smart contracts deployed already. Uh, the staking aspect, $329 million worth of, of Zill being staked, of which I have a fair accumulation of Zillica um, and very much enjoy the staking aspect on the, on the Zillit wallet, which we'll talk about in a second. 
Um, many active users, of course, total number of addresses now 2.5 million. So when people say Zillico is dead or it's a scam coin or this, that and the other, the usual nonsense, uh, I don't think so because there's a lot of money in it. So it's about patience with this one, in my opinion. I think for me, I'm not really fussed about trading it uh, in this coming bull run, whenever that may be. Um, I'm more interested perhaps in uh, three or four years time uh, and certainly 10 years time as the development of the gaming aspect works. And of course, anything else that's on Zillica. We're talking about DEX platforms and all sorts of projects being being entered in there. I mean, you can see some on the ticker here, some absolutely powerhouses of names right there. Um, very interesting. The GZL token is quite interesting, actually, because a few months back, I think it went to like five, six hundred dollars, uh, which is quite incredible, really. So I do think it's got a big space available in the future. Uh, some wrapped elements of tokens as well, like you see the ZDF here as well. So there's loads going on. Uh, OK, of course, is phenomenal blocks. We've seen quite a few videos about recently. Uh, daily transactions obviously been a bit of an, a knockoff effect today, but obviously the day's not finished. So we don't know yet, but there's a lot of transactions, guys. Total value transacted on the chain per day. I mean, I mean that's mental, really. Like yesterday, 58.587. Zill burnt as well. We've got to consider that in terms of the tokenomics aspect. Um, you know, look ahead five years, 10 years down the line uh, as, you know, of course, mining continues. But of course, the burning does also. So I think it's got some really good legs for the future. Um, yeah, look at that. That's absolutely incredible. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Total value locked. 364 million as well. Uh, Zill swap as well, which we've covered in a video recently. So more and more users will be adding to that every day. I think it's got a lot going to it. I don't look at the price too much other than looking at dips. I buy the dips, um, which go on to a second in the chart just to re-emphasize that. But it's really interesting. And, and those that are interested in staking, if you want a staking video for Zillica, let me know. I'll get one done in the next couple of days. But there's a multitude of different ways you can create a wallet. I use zillit.io which is kind of like an official wallet, if you like, of Zillica. You can do it via uh, the mnemonic phrases, of course, the usual 24 words or so. Uh, there's loads of other ways if you've got the Zill Pay app or Moonlit app, uh, things like this. Uh, I personally use the Ledger, as always, um, but it's quite interesting. There's some Google extensions that you can use as well. And it's really cool because then you can activate uh, your Zill to to the networks uh, back, get rewards for that. Great rewards at the moment. I think it's around 14-odd percent AP, APY. Uh, like I said, I'm keeping mine in there for years. So as I keep adding um, in dips, I'm also getting some very nice rewards uh, from Zillica on this system. So like I said, if you want a video on how to do that, I can probably cover the ledger definitely and also the mnemonic phrases, how to create wallets on those and then show you how to transfer your tokens across, etc. Uh, if you want any of these other ones, uh, let me know. Um, I'm very familiar with most of these anyway, but I just wanted to try and keep it simple to the two that I definitely use. Uh, but do let us know if you want that video and I'll definitely get that out to you guys. Um, but yeah, that's very much an opportunity to obtain money uh, for free if you like. Um, you know, let the money do the work for you, as they say. And that's a great opportunity for, for Zill staking at this moment in time. Uh, of course, uh, as the years go by as well, especially in the winter market. So it might be something that you do now or it might be something you put a portion in or it might be something that you wait until the winter market to do. Just bear in mind the fluctuating APYs. I'm sure they'll come down as time goes by as well, like everything else. But that said, um, yeah, I think it's a phenomenal project and there's so much to come. Uh, I absolutely love it. Let's jump into the chart, guys. Uh, smash that like button if you like what you hear and see and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you've not done so already and do hit that notification bell as well if you like to be notified and bombarded by myself when we launch new videos that will keep you informed on your smartphones and desktop so guys the chart Zillica is a snail an absolute snail I call it the snail uh, something that I've, I thought of a while back which is quite funny but um, the like I said, I'm not really focused on the prices right now, personally. Uh, of course, I am to an extent, um, you know, trying to look for dips. And, you know, if we look at this, you know, efficiently, we obviously had some rises back in the May. We had the big drop down. You had the 20th of July momentum in majority of charts. I actually think, like, it's been quite steady growth. And I think because we had the hyper growth earlier in the year, um, I think obviously it's been a bit of a shockwave, come back down, and we've been slowly building it up. 
Um, but you've got to anticipate that way, way back, you know, beginning of this year, arguably, like around sort of three cent mark, we shot up to this sort of 25 cent mark. It was absolutely phenomenal gains, by the way. I didn't take advantage of this. Like I said, mine were in stake and I'm happy for it to continue unless it potentially gets to something like 50 plus cents, then I might have to start taking some back into the exchange. But for now, I'm interested in this. A few videos back, we drew this trend line uh, in anticipation of a slight move up. However, um, of course, the last week or so, we've had FUD all the way around the world of this, that and the other. It's quite a big drop yesterday to be honest we went from a high of 8.1 cents to 5.2 which is quite crazy really that was two days ago apologies and since then we've had a retracement back up obviously some profit taken i'm just going to zoom in a bit more so you can see this um, element that we're talking about here um, and then we have some profit taking of course and we've had a bit more of a correctional period am i worried no not really um, what's quite interesting is we haven't quite dipped down to this like this actual accurate level down here of the 20th of July at five cents pretty much on the nose. So it very much floated just above that, which is very interesting because actually then on, we can now sort of start developing this really interesting momentum of, of a trend line. Now, albeit we're kind of lower than we thought we would. Okay, I'm going to be open about that in the sense that it's, it's not looking amazingly good. However, if you believe in the project and you've done your research, you'll understand what this is, this Zilliqa system is all about. The ecosystem is phenomenal. For me, it's about the future. Of course, I'm sure there will be more gains to be had above this 25 cent mark in the coming bull run, uh, but you've just got to anticipate a bit of patience. And I know it, it sometimes drags on and on, but you have to look, if you pull the chart out, you can actually see it does have some very nice runs back and forth. It's just unfortunate with the developments of the world, with the developments of markets in general and shorting and longing, they haven't worked out for people and you're going to see this kind of move and this portrays more so if you look at the rsi information here as well let's move that bit down and let's move i can't even move that up so what's happened here um <laughs> bit of a mess but never mind i'll try and tidy it up as best i can so here we go guys um three rsi points here i've added a couple more in here because some people were asking about like why do you use 14 day I use 14 day on like a two week sort of period just because I like to see a bit more short term moves and helps me determine some extra buy points. I have put in the 28 day to kind of reflect a, an average kind of month's view as well. And I've done a three month one here as well because in my opinion, around about a three month cycle is quite a good generative number to be looking at to determine its movement over a course of time. I could of course put a year one on there, it's kind of pointless though um, because you're just gonna see a, a fairly flattish line. But the data here for me is shouting out interesting things. The 14 day is probably as low as it can be without falling apart. Um, of course, it could come lower, but I think this is actually a good opportunity for people who missed out on Zilliqa all these times previously in the year, uh, wanting to accumulate for the future. I think it's a phenomenal price point compared to where it will be in the future. Yes, of course, we've had the bull runs earlier in the year, um, and we've seen that it's capable of hitting over those numbers. It won't stabilize at those numbers fully just yet because it's not ready to. The project is too early, in my opinion. That's probably definitely something to accumulate of a sustainability point in the future. Uh, but for me now, right now, and especially on this, this monthly one, it's hitting a 35. I always look on the RSIs on a 14 day in particular around this 40 mark to be my first buy points. If it drops lower than that, say like 35, 32 or 30, there would be some other entry points for my, my um, indicators. That means that in two weeks time, if we hit something like a 70 mark or 80 mark, I know that we doubled our position. And yes, you could of course look at that in other ways as well. It's not rocket science as such. But it helps me because there's so many in my so many things in my portfolio. I've got a full time job. I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help, not just for me manually looking at things like on coin market cap and, and thinking ahead with limit orders. I also need some help visually to go, okay, 14 days. That's interesting because I purchased it back here. Now I know. And it's the same with the month one really as well, because then you get like a medium. Okay. So because now I can go right, right today as of recording. 35 on the monthly so actually that's quite a low number it's below my 40 threshold personally some others might have different uh, strategies behind that but in my mind i'm sort of sat there going interesting i might wait a couple more days i'm going to buy some now 
for the 14 day mechanism. And I'm gonna just wait a day or two personally to see if that comes down a bit further. Um, you know, we always talk about, oh, we've had our business done, the correction's been done. It, it doesn't always work like that. And that's where the higher RSIs come in. If you look at the 90 day, for example, coming to 45, there is an argument to say that actually I could wait a couple more days. I might come reflecting down to 42 or 40. And then all of a sudden I've hit these very nice three points of indicators on the relative strength index here. So it's really interesting to know that. And I'm just going to pull this up here. This is the MACD. Uh, so the moving uh, uh, day as well. Um, so this is interesting because obviously we had the touch point here where we thought we were going to switch over. This uh, identifies arguably um, a resistance here. And that's what we've seen across a multitude of project or assets in, in the crypto sphere, as well as the stock market, of course, is where leveraging kicks off because people have been doing the long terms, uh, thinking it would get to a certain price and it's failed. Then we have the big drop. Uh, shorts kick in. Uh, this is why I always wait a few more days afterwards. I missed the big drop. As you know, I was playing football manager instead of paying attention to the fantastic opportunities that came a couple of days ago. So I'm waiting again. I'm not rushing. I've bought an accumulation today of a multitude of, of projects um, accumulating and topping up. But I have the anticipation by looking at KuCoin and things like this, I can see some of the gains are being made on shorts. So there's clearly some big trading activity going on in the background. And that, in my mind, is a bit cautious activity in the sense that people are still trying to take advantage even of these small areas of movements uh, for their own gains. So you just got to be reflective of that. You've got to be reflective of the world news and you've got to be reflective of things like Bitcoin's movements and this, that and the other. So I'm happy. I'm accumulating, I'm DCAing on the way down, dollar cost averaging, meaning I'm getting specific positions along the way. So when it comes back up, I can do that in a role reversal and take the profits along the way and re and repeat that system um, until we hit some really big numbers, in my opinion. That's when I obviously take a lot of it out, wait for the winter markets if there ever is one, um, and then pull them back in and stake them, etc. So this is where I am right now. But going back to the chart, guys, like I said, I think... We're in a position right now here. I'm just going to pull this part of the chart down so we're a bit more reflective on recent movements here. Um, <clears throat> this is where I believe I think we could possibly round this off. We might get that, that sort of cup and handle movement potentially or a bit of a U shape, a bit of a tail down again with profit taking and then a spike up. That's where I see it going. That's not to say it would definitely happen, but the trend right now obviously being in the bearish momentum that we're seeing the widening of the rsi is is, is uh, of the macd sorry is clear to see that we're not at the end of this we've had the selling off period since the 10th of november it waved off we unfortunately had the days we've had recently i think it'll be a swift turnaround and what i mean by swift i don't mean overnight i mean maybe over a few days time so by the end of this week we might be in a, a relatively position of zillica where it's stabilized uh, just floating perhaps after, over this six cent mark. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it coming back down to these five and a half uh, regions as well, but we will tell this back up. Zillica is not going anywhere. It is a phenomenal project and it will have its moment, whether that be in a few years time, it will certainly have moves in the coming run. So there's nothing personally for me to worry about. Um, all I will say is there's opportunity here, uh, safeguarding, not financial advice, but I feel it's safeguarding the anticipation that you'll, you can buy now it may drop down a bit more. You hold some left for that as well. If it doesn't, it flies up and you're making profit. You're winning both ways in that in that principle. So a couple of other observations uh, before we tail off. 29% down on the week, understandably. And like we said, it's had a bit of a decline for some time now. This is nothing new. We had this point here, 20th of July, as we mentioned. We had a nice uptake to the 5th of September. Uh, now we've had this sort of gradual um, decline here because we were so massively over purchased uh, in this area here we had no support mechanisms no confirmations this is a really key point for me where we are right now because it's matching some really early levels earlier this year good touch points along the way especially coming down below it and back up again and we've been trying as a magnet pulling it back down again this is why i think this is the make or break for zilliqa uh, in these coming days or even the next week or so to turn this around and take us up and potentially, just potentially confirm this kind of five and a half, six cent area as a new support mechanism to take us up to more higher levels appropriately. So guys, keep an eye on this one. That's my observations. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We will see you in the next Silica update video in a few days time to reflect, hopefully, on some swing overs into the positive direction. Thanks for watching, guys.
Bye-bye.